What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Rise to Ruins, a little civ- I guess it's like a civilization manager. We played this game previously under a different name, but I can't recall what the previous name was because I'm old and that means that my brain frequently brain farts about minutia. So anyways, Rise to Ruins, they've changed their names around, you'll probably recognize the gameplay a little bit, but it's been a long time since we checked this game out, so I figured we'd check back on in it and see what it's got going on. Let's go ahead and we gotta make a profile here, we will make a new profile. For the Nerd Castle. The Nerd Castle. There we go. And so the Nerd Castle has been created. As far as I understand, we should probably go to the world map now. we got to decide on a place that we want to set it at all. I don't like that extra T. We're going to be playing this on traditional mode, I suppose, because I don't think I'm quite ready for survival mode, because survival mode seems very angry and upset. Uh, Springland, the Quiet Forest, Apple Meadow, Gateway. Gateway sounds cool. That map looks pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and play Gateway. It's a gateway to a YouTube video. Alright, so we're in Gateway. Our first region in the world. So we gotta place our camp first. But what I wanna do is I wanna find a dope place to settle first before we... Wow, there's a lot of trees around here. This is a pretty solid grip of trees. I'm thinking we probably wanna start over here because there's a bunch of buildings that I can just claim. Like there's a bolt tower and there's some other stuff. So I think I'll probably put my civilization right here for right now. And so there it is. On top of this clay, we have now begun to teleport in. If these people are capable of teleporting, why are they still building houses out of, like, rocks and sticks and stuff? This is the part that concerns me about this whole thing. Now, we've only got a little bit of rock on this map, which I think is going to be the primary challenge. There is some stuff down here, and actually I think we could have made a fairly strong argument about settling over here. But with the water at our backs, that's not the worst spot to be either. What I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up some trees for harvesting. And so we'll harvest those trees right there. And then we are going to need to harvest up some serious rock too. So we'll start with that right there. And there we go. So we've got our trees and our rock all ready to go. Now then, as soon as this is done, and is it done? I can never tell with the camp. Like the camp always seems like it's like rapidly moving, but I can never tell if it's done. So we can reclaim that. This over here takes all kinds of resources to reclaim, so we're not going to be able to touch that for right now. That guy looked like he was on fire for a second, and I was like, well, apparently something has already gone wrong. One of our individuals is on fire. So let's go to our harvesting menu. We want a lumber shack, and we're going to put that right over here. Oh, there's a tree in the way. We're going to put that right over there. There we go. So we've got a lumber shack now. And once we have the lumber shack, we can take some of these people off the building queue. And we can throw them into the lumber shack so that they'll start chopping trees and taking care of business. A mining facility is probably a good idea too. My suggestion would be that a mining facility... That's kind of a long walk though. I'm going to wait until I build a little bit more. I'm going to wait until I build a little bit more. So we've also got housing. A small hovel takes 32 boards, 16 boards. A tent takes wood. So I think I'll probably start with tents. And so we'll put in like a tent right there, a tent right there. I'll probably just kind of make like a little, I'm not going to make this organized. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it like a real city where there's just kind of sprawl. And so there it is. We've built ourselves, nope, not a hovel, a tent. Out of building slots, upgrade your camp to build an, ex oh, an ancillary. Hmm, that's not a good look. Okay. Apparently I'm only allowed to have a certain amount of homes for right now, but that's fine. We've got the homes that we've got. I was actually a little bit worried that it was saying that I couldn't have any more buildings because of other issues, but it's fine. We're good. These guys apparently have hearts floating out of their heads. They're chopping trees over here, doing all kinds of majestic stuff. We are a god in this game, and so we do have the ability to cast spells. If you look at the top of the screen, we've got a bunch of spells we can cast. We can do holy golems. We can do everything from storms to make plants grow. I mean, we could do all kinds of cool stuff with this game. We're not going to do it for right now, because forget that. We don't do useful stuff in this world. But for right now, I'm just letting you know, we can do godlike stuff. It's just not important for the moment. I'm going to make a small farm over here as well. Oh, really? Those are all the building slots that I get. Ooh. Okay. Well, then cancel these down here. We can't afford them. So let's do a small farm instead, because my assumption is that we are probably going to need to feed ourselves. And so that takes 24 wood for him to build that right there. Lumberjacks, let's go ahead and we are going to... Oh, we have extra villagers too. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll put eight lumberjacks over here. And what you should see is that people will go over here, and I think they change clothes if I remember the game from last time. Yeah, they go inside of there and then they change clothes so that they're all color-coded. You can tell them apart from one another. And tell them apart from one another. Oh, we've got a kitchen over here. It looks like we need a stone cuttery for cut stone, so I don't think that's going to help too much as of right now. Let me go back. 
Got a clinic, and we've got an ancillary, a support building that can store any resource. That takes eight rocks, and then it also takes a bunch of wood that we currently don't have. But as we get those lumberjacks moving, it should get a little bit easier for us to have some more wood. Giggity, giggity, goo, and all that. So this guy down here, we've got our small farm being built. It'll be done momentarily. I'll assign a bunch of people to it so that we can have some food. Because at the moment, we are very foodless. Uh, we can't harvest food and water for some reason. I don't know why we can't harvest food and water. But it's grayed out right now. I don't know if we need a special building in order to make that work. Well, we've got our farmers. So I'm going to assign those real fast. It also appears as though you need water now, which is kind of a new modification. I was not aware that you needed water in order to make this work. So... What I will do is we will centralize a well over here somewhere. And so I'll put a well like right there. And that looks pretty good to me. Somebody should run off and over here you can see. I think when they turn green that means that somebody's actively going over there to chop them. And then if you put your mouse over the top of these little guys you can actually see what it is that they're trying to do anyways right now. Which is kind of cool in case you like to micromanage and make sure that everybody's doing the things that need to be done. As far as lighting goes, I don't think we're going to need that. A storage building might be good. I'm a little bit interested in why I can't... Oh, now I can. Why was I not able to do that before? Huh. Interesting. Maybe it's farmers who go and grab food off the ground, and I just didn't know about it. I don't know. Either way, we can harvest food now, so I can live with that. Harvesting food sounds great. What are you? What's your job? So, Rowena Ravenclaw. Isn't that a... I'm pretty sure that that's a Harry Potter character. Because she has, like, the Ravenclaw diadem or something like that. And then, like, they had to talk to her ghost and be like, Yo, ghost, what's up with you? And the ghost is like, Hey, boy, ain't nothing much going on. Just bicking back for Christmas, you know? And so you're like, Oh, shit, son. This ghost is kind of gangster. Her name was Rowena, though. So, or Rowena, so I didn't expect her to be gangster. I guess I made the wrong call. And it just goes to show, never underestimate somebody named Rowena. Uh, we'll have a, so they're building the farm over here. That's basically done. Does everybody have a house? How many people live inside of each of these maws over here? So you got one, two, three. We only have three tents right now. Okay. Total home occupancy is looking good, and we can afford to have one more building before this goes completely, totally sideways. So, my suggestion would be that we build the ancillary, I guess. We don't really have a choice. I don't remember exactly where that was at. But it was here somewhere. So with the ancillary, we can build that right here in the aid menu. And so I think I'm going to make that our final building before we start moving forward a little bit more. And so, out of ancillary slots, upgrade yo camp. Okay, how do I upgrade my camp? There's our ancillary slot right there. If I wanted to upgrade the camp, what's that going to cost me? Pesky ass sneezes in the middle of my series, man. Pesky ass sneezes. Apparently a band of nomads have arrived. That's also a new mechanic that I don't recall too well. Where are the nomads at? Did they like settle over here and then we can fight with them and make war over resources and be like, your iron is ours. And they'll be like, no, the Jarl gave it to us. And I'd be like, the Jarl is a heretic. We will purge him from Thor's grace. And so I, I don't know if that's it. That's how I like to imagine it's going to go. So for food and water... We now need a rain catcher in order to fill up that fountain. So, we've got a well over here and we've got a rain catcher. I'm going to get a well done. So, there it is. J Wedlock, Zod, Kinkle. A couple people have apparently joined my village because they are stoked about the fact that I have a place to live. They were like, yo, dog, I heard you had a thing that you invented with your culture that made it so rain can't fall on your head anymore while you do the sleep things, the sleepy nap times. And I was like, oh yeah, we got that, dude. It's called a roof. And he was like, oh shit, let me be a part of your great culture. Let me ride. Let me fight. Let me show you that I am worthy. And so we've got some rocks from over here. I should probably do a stone mining thing pretty soon as well. We should also probably come up with some kind of, like, defensive battlement or something too because... Well, in order to get this going, I don't think I'm going to be able to make an elemental bolt tower anytime soon. It seems kind of expensive. What is this over here? Let me see. There it is. An ancient radiance pool. So this, I think, allows me to generate mana, if I remember correctly. I don't recall what the Cullis Gate does, but I'm pretty sure this thing is like a mana battery for your god. So that if I wanted to cast more spells, I regenerate a little bit more quickly. Are you guys doing your thing over here? How's it going? You guys, like, finished with that ancillary yet? Good. 
work on that ancillary. Our camp over here can be upgraded for six and six. Why not? You might as well. I mean, if it's six wood and it's six stone, that's not a whole lot to have to invest for apparent tangible benefits. So we have no workers at our ancillary. I think the ancillary just moves objects around, as I recall. So, like, if you have, like, an armor smith, the ancillary is basically your teamster if you've ever played Tropico, if I can recall correctly. I'm pretty sure they go out and they'll grab the wood and bring it to the blacksmith, and they'll go get the ore and bring it to the blacksmith so he doesn't spend all of his time running around trying to go get it. If I remember right, I'm pretty sure that's the way that it works. Now then, we have four more building slots that we can play around with. I'm assuming that once the camp is done, that'll probably allow us to increase our character slots as well. Is everybody, does every we have 45 people and very few of them actually have homes. So we should probably go with some kind of refining building next. Uh, if we can go to a lumber mill. That sounds pretty suitable. It's not going to fit right there. But we can get it to fit right here. So let's do a lumber mill right here. And the lumber mill, they're going to take the wood and they're going to turn it into boards. Once we have boards, we can actually start to build like real houses that people can live inside of so that they don't have to be all salty and sad anymore. And believe me, they are incredibly salty right now. The makeshift well, the water master. Dude, that'd be the diff. Somebody asked me what my job was and I got to tell them that I am the water master. That would be one of the most amazing things I had ever seen in my life. Like, the Water Master. That's a title right there. I bequeath upon you the title of Water Master. Uh, why did the music change? That makes me nervous. I don't like it when music changes in games. It makes me kind of wonder if I'm going to make it. We only have a little bit of food left. So we're going to need to get on that too. So this guy's carrying back like one turnip each time. So what's up with the, uh, what's up with the water fountains over here? Like, what's going on with the makeshift wells? Like, is that actually doing anything for me? So, it's accumulating water. Let me go ahead and upgrade it. We'll make it a little bit better so they can hold a bit more. This upgrade system actually didn't exist inside the game the last time I played. And so, it's actually kind of an interesting thing that I'm wrestling with right now. It's good to see an indie game come across with so much progress, though. I mean, I come across a lot of indie games, and a lot of them you come back after like six months, and they've had two patches, and the patches have added like negligible content, whereas with this game, it's been six months since I've played it, and jumping back on in, it looks like they've spent basically all of their time just adding new things to it and making the game more diverse and more in-depth, and that's the kind of thing I like to see when I come back to a title after a long hiatus. I'm very excited about it. And so somebody will eventually upgrade this. At the moment, um, my guess is that they're all focusing pretty heavily on working on the lumber mill. We'll reassign some builders from the lumber mill after we get out of here. They'll start making boards. I do think a storage yard is probably a decent idea. Is that still gathering water? Like, I think people must be drinking out of it is really what's going to end up happening. Is I think people are drinking out of it or something. I should probably make some rain catches or something too. Let's see here. Food and water. We've got a small fountain right there. And then... We've got a water purifier. Converts a dirty surface water into usable fresh water for your village. Requires a well master to bring surface water from nearby sites. I don't think that's what I want for right now. I don't think that's what I want. So night has arrived. Uh, I'm just going to play around with these buildings over here. Let's try the water purifier next. And with the water purifier, if none of these end up... I'm sorry, not the water purifier, the rain catch. If these don't end up helping us at all, I'll just destroy them. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just playing around with stuff right now so that you can see what's on offer with the game in its current iteration. So builders are over here just dropping rocks everywhere. I do wish we had a rock supply that was a little bit closer. The lack of rocks over here kind of concerns me, and I don't like it very much. I was hoping that what we'd be able to do is we'd expand out this way, and then I'd have the mill right here. But it's just like it takes them so long to walk over there to go get rocks. I should have picked my starting place a little bit better. We've also got magical crystals around. I think we use those for some kind of... I hope we don't get attacked on our first night. So night has arrived. Hopefully you've built some defenses like a bow tower. I haven't. But I do have the ability to drop a flaming meteor on my enemies. So maybe that'll help. Like maybe that'll be useful. Why is this person smoking? That person is clearly on fire and is very much struggling and somebody needs to help them. So we're coming up on the conclusion of our lumber mill over here. The last couple rocks are about to be slammed into place. I didn't make a bow tower, but I didn't think we'd be getting attacked the first night, you know what I mean? Like, I, that was not something that I expected out of this overall experience. So if we end up getting slammed on the first night, I suppose that that's uh, 
Well, that's the way the dating life goes. I guess that's the way it goes. So the rocks are all over here. My assumption is that somebody just needs to step in here and like hammer it for a little while. Exactly, like that little person right there. Good job, buddy. You hammer away. Michelle Akers. That's a good name. Michelle. I like that name. Michelle works. We can have some carpenters, so I'm going to go ahead and assign two carpenters right there. We've got our farmers. We've got our water masters. The only thing we're a little bit low on are lumberjacks, but I think I can assign, like, one of those, maybe. I don't know. It says we have a surplus worker right there, but it doesn't seem to maybe it's just because whoever this builder is hasn't gone to the building that they're supposed to be in for right now and another thing that I liked about this game is if you look as they place wood inside the building the graphic for the building actually changes and it starts to have more wood piles outside I love that that's a fantastic feature it's one of those a little attention to detail type things that a lot of games would just skip over but in the case of this game they didn't and so I appreciate that very much as a player I like it a lot uh, so for the builders we have right now the next thing we probably want to look into is housing situations. Uh, these guys over here are going to be going to work. What they're going to do is they're going to strip wood and they're going to turn it into boards, uh, which is very, very good for us. I don't know if I can set a production limit on the boards. It doesn't look like I can, so we'll just have to keep an eye on our wood stocks for right now. But I was sort of hoping, so that right there has 17 water inside of it. My thought for the way that this must work is that it generates the water... And then I'm assuming the water master comes over here, grabs it, and takes it to the fountain where everybody can get water from it. But I don't know if that's the truth or not. Either way, we have a well that's up and running. Oh, we can have another water master too. Okay, give us another water master then. Another master of the water. Apparently, it's understaffed. You have two... How is it understaffed? You have the maximum amount of workers. Apparently, it's not now. It just un it just un understaffed. I'm hoping that some of these fields up here will become equitable too, because if they don't, we're really going to struggle with our current food situation. It's going to be rough. Hey, there's water right there. That's good, because I think that means that thing's going to fill up right there pretty aggressively. Does the well fill up as well? What's that strange miasma that's coming up out of our well? I don't feel good about that, but I do feel pretty stoked about the fact that we're getting a shit ton of free water, so... Hell yeah, these guys all look like they're doing some kind of boogie dance next to the lake, too. Get your boogie on! Oh. Summer arrives in three days, monsters will arrive in one day. So we probably want to make some defenses now, would be my assumption. So let's go back up, and I'm going to flip around. And as far as walls go, we can go with wood gates and wood fences. It'll take the enemy a little bit longer to get through. But actually, I'm thinking we should probably just build the defenses. So let's go back, and we've got defenses. So we've got an attract tower. We've got cut stones are what we need for some of these things. A ballista tower. What do we need for a bow tower? Just, like, basic stuff. So it requires a bowyer. Okay. So as far as refining goes, let's go to our refining menu. I don't think that's what we need. Instead, we're going to go to manufacturing. For a boyer, we need 24 and 8. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and try and put this guy... Oh, I don't know. Somewhere where he'll be useful. Apparently, I have opened the problem panel. The panel full of problems. All the people telling me all the ways that I'm doing my job wrong. It's all right. People are allowed to speak in my country. They just aren't allowed to act on it. That's fine, they can talk bad about me. I'm still the rich lord, and they're still the broke-ass turnip hauler. That's just, I can't help that. I can't, I can't help their station in life. It's not my concern, you know what I mean? And then if we get the bowyer, I think we'll have a little bit better of a chance over here at making ourselves. We've got the armor smithy, I don't think that's going to help. Instead, I'm going to go up to defenses, and I am going to do a bow tower. We have no available crystals. Okay, well, I'll set those up to be harvested then right there. And then we'll go with a bow tower right there. And I just want people to be safe. And so we'll go, like, with another one right there. Right there. And then we'll kind of just curve that down to there. And hopefully that gets done over the course of the day. They got a lot of stuff to work on, so it could swing in either direction. 
This might work out really well. It might not work out really well. You never quite know. With city managers, eh, sometimes things happen that you like. Sometimes things happen that you don't like. You gotta do what you gotta do, boo-boo. Well, at least the rain is nice. The rain is really good. So we've got that almost at 300 right there. This guy is sitting low. But I'm thinking that if we take the rain catcher and we upgrade it... Let's wait on the rain catcher upgrade. I don't think it's going to be important for right now. But as the builders start to work on this stuff, I just want to make sure we're defended for tonight. At least so we can put up a fight. You know, if we're going to go down, let us go down gloriously. Like the kitty gods intended, you know what I mean? Sorry, I've got a cat on my lap right now and he's looking at me being like, You haven't invoked my divine name yet. And I'd be like, that's because you aren't divine. You're a little fuzz rat that lives in my house. Exhaustion. She's starting to get sleepy. If your village is too higher, they may end up sleeping outside. Okay, did you know that Agatha Christie has found her new mate, Barry Christie? It's either one of them have a home and they're happy enough they can try and make a baby. They also visit each other to boost their mood or live in the same house whenever possible. Okay. So they're working on projects over here. It looks like most of these are almost done. Workers are grabbing everything they can from every location they can. I need to queue up a bit more harvesting of wood over here. And so you guys just harvest the night away, man. Harvest. Everybody's feeling great. Harvest. Harvest. Harvest the trees away. I don't know if I can actually destroy these stumps that are on the ground right here. I would like to destroy these stumps so that I can build in this area. That would be super rad. But I don't know exactly how I clear a stump just yet. I don't even know if that's a thing that I'm able to do. I don't have any spells, and there's no, like, stumping tool down here. It's possible that I can destroy terrain using that right there. Oh, yeah, I can. There we go. So we can get those stumps up and out of the way, too. Good. Well, that'll make for a fantastic little area right there. We have no workers inside of our Fletchers. So let's get rid of a couple of builders, and we will have a couple of Fletchers in here. So there it is, two more Fletchers. They should be able to make arrows, and I think arrows are the means by which we convert people to archers, or the means by which we're able to like shoot at our enemies or something like that. I think it'll be okay. We've got this covered, man. We've got this by the ass. We've got this by the ass. I think... God, that reminds me of Dawn of the Dead, man. I need to watch Dawn of the Dead again. The original, like, 1979 or 1981 or whatever it was, Dawn of the Dead. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's so cheesy, but it's so good. Like, it's one of those films that's just, like, infinitely watchable. I've probably watched it about 100 times, but then my DVD broke, and so I don't have it anymore. Now i got to focus on getting myself, like, a new copy. Hopefully, nighttime's not coming soon, because if nighttime is coming soon, we have some fairly major issues that we're going to have to tolerate here. It doesn't look to me like they go through water that rapidly. I'm not exactly sure what the function is of a fountain versus the function of the rain catcher. My thought was that this catches the rain and this stores the rain. But I don't really see it going down like that. I keep seeing this little guy with the water. Oh no, he just added water to it. Okay. That's sort of interesting. I hate that feeling you get when your cat is laying on your lap and they're like about to slide off from gravity. But, like, you can't move because it'll scare them and they'll fall anyways. But they're probably going to fall. And you know that they're going to grab onto your legs with their claws. And you're just going to be like, Aah! And it's going to hurt so much. Oh, I'm waiting for it to happen right now. I'm waiting for it to happen. And I know it's going to. I know it's going to. I'm sitting here just waiting on the ass whooping to happen. So, anyways, this game is called Rise to Ruins. If you guys liked it so far, let me know. And I'll try to do a few more episodes. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Indie Games. If you don't know who I am or you're new to the channel, I show off indie games every single day here on the interwebs. Aside from that, you can also catch me at Twitch TV. Same cat time, same cat channel every single day at 3 p.m. All right. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. And hi do, everybody.